Hello, and welcome back to the channel. This is, I'm pretty excited about this video because I get to mix some things that I've been doing recently with things that I've been doing for a while. And so for those who have never been here before, I use Ionic Framework with the most of the work that we do at Clearly Innovative Inc. Um, it's a cross-platform, for lack of a better word, I, uh, eh, it's a cross-platform uh, framework for building uh, mobile applications and you can bring your own JavaScript frameworks. You can write in Ionic, React, Vue, Angular, pretty much any any JavaScript framework. You can use the Ionic UI components, but then Ionic has a whole ecosystem of tools to kind of support your development. The one that I use the most is, uh, is a capacitor. And so what that basically does is creates a container for you to take your web, web solution, package it up as a mobile application and deploy um, on device has a set of community plugins for you to connect to the native functionality on the phone. I think it's a, it's a great combination. I'm, what I'm demonstrating here is the ability to use Ionic with Vue with Remix Router, which is the thing that I've been spending a lot of time doing, and I spoke at a conference regarding Remix. And basically what they've done with Remix Router is they've taken a lot of the, a lot of the goodness from React and, uh, sorry, not React, a lot of the goodness from Remix, and they've packaged it into the router. And so you kind of get, is that what I'm kind of saying, this, re, this remix way of doing things, you can now kind of bring it over to Vue. I know I saw that they've uh, ported it over to Angular also, and I've also been playing with it on React, and I'll do that as a separate video. Um, so what it does is it allows me to use the remix router in my mobile solutions that I'm deploying to devices uh, using Ionic and Capacitor. And just kind of for those who aren't familiar, I'll just do a quick run here. If you go to the remix website, kind of on the home page, this kind of like sums up what we're really getting from the router. And so as you can see here on your normal, let's assume that this is a component and inside your component, you want to list a bunch of objects. Let's just say objects, doesn't really matter. And then also you want to kind of post some data, right? And so like normally you would expect to see some sort of state management here to kind of, um, load the load the data into the page and then when there's a state change it's a reactive change and that forces the list to update itself and it renders and then also here like you look at a lot of apps today you don't even see a form or or a submit being included in them they're they're responding to clicks on buttons and based on that they're calling a function and they're updating state there's a whole bunch of stuff going on and what they've managed to do here is kind of simplify a lot of that for you so the important things that we're just focusing on in this short little demo here is you have your component, which is projects, you have your loader function, and you have your action function. And just to keep it really simple, is that the loader function gets rendered whenever this component, sorry, the loader function gets called when this component gets uh, rendered or updated. And this action function gets called whenever you submit um, your button here. So when I click submit here, it's gonna call this action function. And these guys are pretty straightforward. They perform some action and they return some value. Um, the action, I click my submit, it'll perform some action or it'll return some data. And then the magic of Remix realizes, do I need to kind of reload um, this component? And then if necessary, it'll re it calls the loader function and updates the data that's being rendered here. And so what they've done is they've taken this functionality and kind of moved it over and into a router. And so now what I'll do is I'll move my big head down to the bottom here and we will kind of just walk through a simple example here. Also, all this code is posted on my website so you can take a look at, sorry, posted on GitHub so you can take a look at it, walk through it yourself. We'll just kind of start at the top. The important thing to notice here is that I've completely removed the router here from my application so there's no router here. And if we go to my, so from my main, let's go to my app view and kind of inside my app view is where I have my router and I'll just kind of walk through what's going on here. So the way that I look at it is here is, so these are my routes that are defined. This is my top level route, which is my layout, right? So it's kind of like the container that all of these children will live inside. And so what you do in the route is you define an element. You can also catch errors. And so you have an error, em, uh, an error element that is specific to each route. So I can capture the elements a lot closer to home. So you can see down here on this index route here, 
uh, I, I also have an error element. So each one of these guys capture their, ele cap uh, capture their errors independent of the other ones. Um, then my, in my layout, I'm not loading any data so you don't see a loader or action. But if you look down here on my index, so this is, since, since I have index is true, this is the index element, and so I'm calling it index. This is what will be called by default when you first hit this slash route. Um, and then what happens is you define a function as your loader that should be called. You define a function as your action it should be called. I'm defining the component that's associated with this path. And then um, I'm defining my error element. And you can see I have another component that just lists a bunch of data. And, it, and so I'm specifying the path. So this would be slash list. I define a loader, I define an action, I define the element, and I define a view. Now let's take a quick peek at, first let's look at the layout. Do I have these guys open? Uh, so here's my layout view. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the outlet. Now if there's some other content that I wanted to peer, to peer around my, um, my application, like if I had a navigation bar at the top, because you see this more in like regular applications, you don't really see it in mobile apps. So if I, the navigation bar might live inside of this layout here, but here for the specific scenario with an Ionic app, um, I just need, Ionic needs the, the whole thing to be wrapped in Ionic app. So that's all I do. So I'm wrapping everything that's gonna be rendered inside of this Ionic app element. And then I have my outlet, and this is where all of the other routes are gonna be rendered. And so that's what you have inside of your layout. So now I go back and so the next thing down is my index. And so if we take a look at my index here, Come on. A lot of stuff here for those who are Ionic people, as you can see, a lot of it really just is the UI components. So I have my page, my header, my toolbar. I have my nice loading component. Most of it are just components, but what we're really here about is kind of our actions and our loaders. So also a couple of things to notice. First of all, you notice there's two separate script tags. So this script tag up at the top here, I have my action and my loader and my setup script down here in the bottom, I have my regular view uh, components. So since this page, actually it's probably better if I show you the page. So we look at this page. So this is my home page. I mean, this is my index route. So a couple of things, you can see it says check on my data. And so this is showing me that my loader is running when my page gets started. So let's kind of refresh this. So you can see my loader's running, so I'm getting this as a test. Let's change this. Hello. And so when I load this page, that I get that data back. And as you can see how that's working, put this over here. So page loads, calls the loader, it returns the loader data. And then you have this hook called use loader data, which gives you back the data that was sent back. And then up here in the top, I'm just kind of rendering my data. And so you can see the data. Then the next thing that I do is you have your action function. And remember, this is called when I submit. And so down here, I have my submit button. No, that's, that's this list button. I have my submit button. And what it's, since it's a submit button, it's gonna trigger the form action. And the form action is just to kind of call this action function that I've created up here at the top. And what it's gonna do, this is kind of your old fashioned uh, HTML. It's gonna get my form data, and then I can get all the fields off my form data. And then normally you might wanna take some action, like take a database call or do something like that. And that's what you would do inside of here. And then you also have the ability to return data. And so all I'm doing is I'm getting all the fields from the form and I'm just returning them. And just like the load action, just like the load, sorry, just like the load has its loader data, the action has the action data and you can say use action data and it gives you back the action data. So if I enter just something here from my saved information, so a name, email, and some other data, click select, click save. I'm getting my action data back. And so you can see it processed my form that I sent up and here's the data that gets sent back from my use action data. So you can see I have my use action data right here and here's my action data just being dumped out so you know it got sent up. 
Um, the other thing, the we have this nice link component that we can use to kind of navigate to different pages. And so I think I covered everything I wanted to cover here. Oh no, the other thing I wanted to show you is that we get some nice um, state information on kind of what's going on with the page. So you can see here, so let me do this again. Watch closely this save in this go to list page. Basically what I'm doing is I'm tracking the state of the page. And as long as it's not idle, then I'm not saving. But down here what I do is I disable these buttons when it's saving. So if I click save, watch closely, come on. You can see the buttons are kind of um, are kind of going gray for a little while, so I'm able to disable them. You you get additional state information that you can get from this navigation value, which is also documented. But it's just nice to show you that th this is uh, some nice little UI sugar that you get um, that can kind of help you with your loading loading screen disabling things and such and stuff like that. Um, what else is here? Um, I think we can just jump to our, let's go to our next page for our list page. So like I said, I wanted to keep this simple. If I go to my list page, you see I have my little loading screen. So let's hop open to my list view. And in my loader, I'm just calling random API to just get some data, converting it and passing it back as my loader data. But if you notice, you saw this, uh, where is it? You saw, where did it just go? Hmm. Um, so what we're covering here is my loader. There's no action, so I'm not posting anything. I'm not saving, it's just a list of data. Like if I wanted to capture, you know, clicking on a user, I might have an action function that will respond to a click on a specific user and you get the data inside of your action function and do what you want it to do. But here we're just kind of focusing on the loader. So you saw that my loader data got, it hit, called my loader function when the page got loaded. And then it comes down here. I do my get loader data. I have my data. And then I'm just kind of looping through it and rendering it here. Um, and then I just have my normal back button to kind of navigate back to my original page. So the, the, the cool thing that I wanted to show, like I said, this is just a very high level overview of it to kind of see if it's if it's something you're interested in, you can kind of dig in deeper and I'm happy to do more videos on it. I'm gonna do a React video also, but I think that there's some interesting things being done with uh, the Remix router and it, it gives you a different perspective potentially on, let me kind of move myself back up here, gives you a different perspective potentially how to build your applications, potentially reduce some lines of code and kind of make it easier to manage, easier to read and easier to understand. So like I said, if it's something you're more interested in, please make sure you like, subscribe, drop me a note. Let me know what you think about Remix Router. And um, thanks for stopping by. Take care. Bye now.